all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Tight boots, baggy shorts, leather gloves, stepping in a ring, and the will to accept punishment but hope to dish out more is what creates a boxer. With violence comes risk. This is what boxing is built on, the drive to hurt the person standing in front of you. Some only agree to it for as long as they can defend getting punched in the face. But once they get to a point where getting hit is more common than hitting, they realize it's time to stop. The word society uses for them are quitters. While the book definition matches the act, the meaning behind the term is used to put someone down, at least when it comes to fighters. Someone can quit their 9 to 5 job and come up with a multitude of reasons why they did it. The first reaction to someone quitting their job is what happened, something had to be wrong for you to quit. Are they still quitters? Yes. But not in the same way boxers are when they decide to stop a fight? How is that? The same should go for boxing. The first thing that should pop in the mind should be the same thought process. What happened? What's wrong? It's time to make it make sense. The problem isn't calling someone who quits a quitter. The issue is when that term is thrown out loosely and used in the wrong situations for the wrong reasons. Boxing is dangerous and to keep it as safe as possible, that will involve fights not ending with someone going to sleep. For starters, they don't always end with a knockout or the fighter quitting. Sometimes it's their corner or a ringside doctor that stops it. Both are trained professionals that know when too much is in fact too much. If a fighter stops a fight, then there are two reasons behind it. One is they just don't want to continue. Two, they can't keep taking the punishment they are receiving. One is a quitter and the other should be applauded. Boxers have literally signed up to take punishment and to dish it out for fame, entertainment and money, hence the word prize fighters. That by itself is worthy of praise. Most people don't even enjoy losing in a board game, let alone a fight. How about the realization that this is their job? And probably not their only one. Praise comes to those who stand up to a mean boss, but not to a boxer not continuing a fight after they lose sight in one eye, or their brain is going through a drum roll, or they can't breathe properly, or they have a broken bone or a dislocated shoulder. The injuries are endless, and the long-term effects are just as terrifying. Yes, of course, it's a tremendous story when a fighter does deal with those things and goes on to finish the fight. But how many of them would say it was worth it? Not very many, especially the ones that still lost. Since when was the definition of being a fighter involved putting the rest of their life at risk for no reason? Turn the tables in the Canelo Alvarez vs. Billy Joe Saunders situation. What if it was Canelo who had his face broken requiring surgery? How many would want him to risk the rest of his career for just this fight? A betting man would say no one. The idea is to fight another day, to live another day, to have a life after boxing. Those are the ones that deserve praise. The Timothy Bradleys and Andre Wards of the world. They are still in boxing, just on the outside of the ring looking in. They knew when it was time to stop and left with a successful career. No one wants these fighters to go through long-term detriments to their capability of functioning as everyday human beings. The way to avoid that from happening is by limiting the damage. Sometimes that means quitting, and that's okay.